Have you ever wondered why planes fly over the North Pole but not the South Pole? Today, we're going to unravel this intriguing question. Welcome to Aero Strange, where we dive headfirst into the captivating world of aviation and geography. In this episode, we'll explore common flight paths, the unique challenges of polar flights, and the fascinating reasons behind why planes favor the North Pole. So buckle up as we take off on this fascinating journey to the poles. The journey from North America to Asia or Europe to Asia is a long one, but did you know that it's actually shorter to fly over the North Pole? It's all about the shape of our planet. You see, Earth isn't a perfect sphere, it's an oblate spheroid, meaning it's wider around the equator and narrower at the poles. This shape influences the quickest routes between continents. For instance, a flight from New York to Beijing is more direct when the aircraft soars over the North Pole rather than following the curve of the equator. This is a phenomenon known as the Great Circle Distance, which is the shortest distance between two points on the surface of a sphere. But not all routes utilize the polar path. Flights from London to New York, for example, are more efficient along a different trajectory. It's all about finding the shortest, most efficient route, given the shape of the Earth and the starting and ending points of the journey. Now, it might seem odd that we're not taking advantage of the South Pole in a similar manner. Let's dive into why that is. Flying over the poles is not as simple as it seems. Indeed, these regions pose unique challenges to aviation, with the extreme cold being the most obvious. The frigid conditions can cause parts of the aircraft to freeze affecting its performance. Not to mention the cold can also complicate fuel management as jet fuel can freeze at high altitudes. But the cold is not the only issue. The magnetic interference at the poles can wreak havoc on navigation systems. See, our regular compasses rely on Earth's magnetic fields, but these fields converge at the poles, causing compasses to become unreliable. This means pilots have to use other methods of navigation when flying over these regions. And then there's the issue of emergency landing options, or rather the lack thereof. In most parts of the world, if a plane encounters a problem, it can divert to a nearby airport. But over the polar regions, these options are severely limited. Airports are few and far between, and in some cases, non-existent. That's where ETOPS, or Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards, come into play. These standards dictate how far a twin engine aircraft can be from a suitable airport at any point in its flight. The higher the ETOPS rating, the further the aircraft can be from an airport. Thus, aircraft with high ETOPS ratings are more suited for polar flights. So, we see that polar flights have their fair share of challenges, but why the North and not the South? You might think that the South Pole would offer similar advantages to the North, but that's not entirely true. Geographical differences are a significant factor. The Arctic is an ocean surrounded by continents, while the Antarctic is a continent surrounded by oceans. This means there are more cities near the North Pole that aircraft can use for refueling or emergencies. On the other hand, the South Pole is remote and far from major cities, which makes it less ideal for commercial flights. Moreover, air traffic control and infrastructure are more developed in the Northern Hemisphere. This contributes to safer and more efficient flights over the North Pole. Lastly, safety considerations are paramount. The North Pole has more available options for emergency landings compared to the South Pole. This is critical because in the event of a technical issue, pilots need to be able to land safely in a timely manner. But that's not all. The climate and atmospheric conditions also play a huge role. The polar climate is unlike any other, and it has a significant impact on aircraft performance. The extreme cold in polar regions can affect an aircraft's mechanical systems, from fuel handling to hydraulic fluids. Cold-soaked fuel, for instance, can freeze and clog fuel lines, which could be disastrous mid-flight. The atmospheric conditions can also play a significant role. For instance, the jet streams, which are fast-flowing, narrow air currents in the Earth's atmosphere, can affect flight times. If a plane is flying with the jet stream, it can significantly reduce the flight time, but going against it can make the trip much longer. Weather patterns in these regions can be unpredictable and severe, with blizzards and ice storms posing additional challenges for pilots. In short, flying over the poles is not just about plotting the shortest route on a map. It involves a complex balance of meteorology, aircraft design, and pilot skill. However, it's not just climate and geography that dictate these flight paths. Legal and regulatory aspects also come into play. The sky might seem like a free-for-all, but it's actually heavily regulated. International agreements and regulations govern polar flights, ensuring safety and order in the skies. Airspace sovereignty, 
a country's jurisdiction over its skies, shapes flight paths, plus navigation rights, or the freedom to fly over a country also play a part. These legalities can nudge flight paths towards or away from certain regions. So, there you have it. The reasons why planes fly over the North Pole but not the South Pole are complex and multifaceted. So, what did we learn today? We've explored the fascinating world of polar flights, understanding why planes often choose the North Pole over the South Pole. We've delved into geographical differences, flight challenges, and the impact of climate on aircraft performance. We've also touched upon legal and regulatory aspects that govern these intriguing flight paths. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing aviation content. Thanks for flying with Aero Strange.